We finally got some information about commands last week in a Warhammer community article, and we're going to take a look at all that information today to see if commands have really changed that much or if they are still on par with what we are seeing in the third edition of Age of Sigmar. And make sure you stick around because at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about whether I think this is an overall good change for the game or if we are going down a dark path. So I wanted to acknowledge why this video is coming out a little bit later than I would have liked. Basically, I have a lot to do. I am working as a teacher and I have report cards that are due this week. So I've been working super hard on those and I've also been dealing with a concussion, although I'm feeling much better lately and like today I'm feeling really good. I still have days where it's pretty tough to record and so I just didn't really get around to doing any recording last week. So with all that said let's talk about these new command points and command abilities. So each player is going to get four command points at the start of a battle round to spend over the course of that round and there are 10 different commands that you can issue. Any command points that you don't use are going to be gone and then you'll get four new ones at the start of the next round so there's no way of hoarding them. If you have fewer auxiliary units than your opponent, you are going to get an extra command point. If you have less victory points than your opponent, you are going to get an extra command point as the underdog. So now we have a really tangible way of how that is going to work. If you are behind, you get more CP and you can do more cool things. So that seems like a pretty cool way of helping people catch up and, you know, hopefully not being too overwhelming in terms of making up that difference. So they mentioned that you must pay the command point cost to use a command and that is maybe a hint that there's going to be no free war scroll like use a command for free because I'm a leader or you know uh, things like that. So they also say there's no abilities in the game that generate command points so an army like Osiarch Bone Reapers which is going to you know in the past they depended on a big command point economy they're going to have new powerful mechanics to make up for that instead so that's cool to see you know what, what they might get new in you know in place of that uh there's also no no more need to use any generals or totems or heroes or unit champions or elite units to issue commands that's a thing of the past because now a unit can just issue itself a command so if you need to use one the unit can do it done simple streamlined all of these commands are going to be found in the command module, which is a pretty big deal in my opinion. No more hunting around to find them. And there are going to be 10 commands, four that are reactions, and six that happen at the end of a phase. And these reaction commands happen after somebody uses an ability. And keep in mind that everything is an ability now. Attacking, spell casting, moving, those are all abilities. So let's take a look at those actual commands next. But before we do that, I command you to subscribe to the channel and like the video. That was pretty bad, but I'm going to stick by it because I'm a small channel. I got to do what I got to do to grow. And I appreciate all the support uh, from you all. The reactive commands are all unchanged, so we won't spend a lot of time on them. We still have all out attack and all out defense. They're great commands. They're going to see tons of play in the new edition. We also have at the double for running and forward to victory for charging, and they haven't changed uh, as well. So the only thing that's really clear here is just the, you know, the steps in order to use them. So uh, they have the new like declare ability step, and then you do any rules that have to do with that. So for example, if you declare that you're going to charge, the charge rule is part of that first step. And then when you get to the reaction step, you would then, uh, you know, use your forward to victory command point. So it's after the roll has actually happened. So it's all just kind of cleaned up in the text there. They also say at this point in the community post that they have, uh, you know, moved from the reaction commands to the new commands, which are more reactive. So that doesn't really make any sense. But what you have to know is that there's four commands that react to specific abilities. Those are the reactive ones. And then we have six commands that can only happen at the end of a phase. So after everything else in that phase has happened, and technically you're, you might be reacting to things too. You're always reacting to things in Warhammer, but they're not reactive commands. So let's talk about these six remaining commands because some of them are revamps, some of them are brand new. And like I said, they have to happen at the end of the phase that they take place in. And that means that the active player whose turn it is has finished all of their actions. So starting with rally, this can be used in either hero phase at the very end. And instead of recurring units on a six or sorry, recurring models on a six, you now make six rally rolls on four pluses. You get rally points and you can use those points to heal one, which is a new keyword, uh, which is 
you know, fine. So now you can heal a model, not just resurrect it. You can also use those points to restore a slain model if they have the same amount uh, of points as the health in that model that you need to restore. They mentioned that this is going to effectively become heroic recovery, meaning that heroic recovery doesn't exist as a heroic ability anymore. And we know that because in the next article, they say that heroic actions are gone in the new edition. So I like this change. It seems really fair. It, you know, it felt bad when somebody got lucky on a dice roll and brought back a super massive model with a ton of wounds. And instead, uh, they can really be restricted and, you know, maybe resurrecting a lot of small guys or maybe resurrecting one bigger guy or healing somebody. And I think that's really cool to have that kind of variability in play. It's way bigger. It's a way bigger challenge to bring back a larger unit. And you actually won't be able to bring back something with more than six health uh, because you only have six rolls unless we see abilities that maybe, you know, uh, there, there were war, war scroll abilities that interacted with rally in the past. Maybe there'll be some war scroll rally, uh, things where it's like if you use rally, you can get an extra rally roll or something. And in that case, we could resurrect something bigger. But we at this point, all we know is that we get six when you use the rally command. So then we have redeploy its back and I like how it just says pick a friendly unit that is not in combat to use this ability. Super streamlined, no more talking about inches. I know we all understood what redeploy did, but it's just this is a better way to phrase it for a new player. It just makes sense. As a new player, you're not really thinking about oh well if you're within three inches you're in combat and and like that all that kind of stuff doesn't really clue in right away there's so much information. So this is a way better way to word it. Otherwise, it's exactly the same except it happens at the end of the phase. So no longer can somebody move something and then you say, ha, I'm going to redeploy. You have to wait till all those move happen. So, you know, hope that they don't cut you off or take the spot that you wanted to take or whatever it is, uh, because they have that chance now to interfere with your redeploys a little more than they did previously. After that, we have Covering Fire, which is a new command that replaces Unleash Hell. So you can use this at the end of your opponent's shooting phase to let one of your units shoot. They cannot be in combat and they must target the nearest visible unit and their chance to hit is, is reduced by one. So this is a blend of Unleash Hell and Return Fire order from the Cities of Sigmar. It's a cool way to interact with your opponent, especially if the nearest model to one of your shooters happens to be a high priority target that will really affect the way that the combat phase is going to go. Now, just because you can shoot in this phase now on your opponent's phase, it doesn't mean you can snipe anybody because again, they have to be the closest model. You also can charge into models now. You can charge into shooters and they cannot unleash hell on you anymore. And once you charge into them, you're in combat and you will no longer be able to use return fire. So this is going to be a really big shakeup in terms of how this interaction goes. It's going to nerf shooting a little bit, which I think is fine. And overall, I think this is a pretty cool command. Next up, we have counter charge, which is a new command that allows you to charge at the end of your opponent's charge phase after they've made all of their charges. This is a super impactful ability and as such, it costs two command points instead of one. This takes a page from the Cities of Sigmar counter charge order, but of course there's tons of factions that use counter charging. And so I wonder how this is going to affect all of those other factions and their abilities. Now, what I think is going to happen is that we're going to see these augmented command abilities where a faction that might've used counter charging will now get a better version of counter charge for certain models that have a war scroll ability. And that will still kind of enable the spirit of what they used to be able to do. So what that will actually look like, we don't know yet, but essentially you'll just get a better version of it or maybe a reduced cost counter charge for certain uh, armies or I don't know, but th all the possibilities are there. And I like that we're, I mean, we're going to talk about it in a sec, that there are ways to augment these command abilities using a war scroll ability from a model. We can now talk about magical intervention, which lets you pray or cast spells in your opponent's hero phase. And after they're done doing all their stuff. However, you are going to have to subtract one from the casting role when you do this. It's a really neat command and you do get like some awesome counterplay chances. One of the things that I think is very cool about this is that if you go second, you actually get a chance to cast a mystic shield. You can put it on somebody that you think is going to get whacked and you normally wouldn't have had a chance to put that on there. It might save you a command point for not having to use all out defense. Uh, and you have to think about, well, 
in the current rules, if you cast it on their phase, then by when it passes to your turn, it's actually going to go away. That's fine. You know, it depends on what the circumstances are, but I think this is going to give us some really cool counterplay options. Uh, you're going to have to use some lower casting and chanting value prayers and, and spells just because you get a minus one to your roll, but still very, very cool way to uh, interact here. Now, they mention in this blurb that this the prayers in uh, Age of Sigmar are going to be substantially changed. That's the word they use, substantially, uh, because the new edition is going to differenti dif differentiate uh, prayers from magic, and I'm really curious as to what that could mean. Okay, so we have one last command to talk about, which is power through. It's a new command that can be used at the end of the turn, and it lets a unit that charges in that turn uh, rip through at a unit that it's engaged with and then move right past it. It's going to deal D3 mortal damage and then move up a distance uh, equal to its move characteristic. It can leave combat, so it doesn't have to, you know, stay within three inches, but it cannot tag new units in combat. So here's the catch. You can only use this on an abil this ability on units with a lower health characteristic than the unit you want to use it with. It means that infantry are basically not going to get to use this ability because if they have one health, there's nobody lower than them they can even use power through on. However, if you had like a Saurus warrior or something, they might be able to use it on other infantry. But basically, bigger units like monsters are going to get way more out of this. The chance to deal some extra damage and then reposition for an objective or maybe get the jump on something behind a screen is going to be very impactful. It's going to be an exciting choice that you can make at the end of the turn if you have a command point left. And keep in mind that these command points are going away at a certain point, right? So they're going to be refreshed on the next uh, turn. So you want to use this uh, before you get to that turn. We also see the new Storm uh, Strike Chariot War Scroll, and I won't do a full deep dive onto that War Scroll right now, but I want to mention that it has an ability that adds to this power through effect. And so what this does is it deals an additional D3 mortal wounds and it will increase the movement after by D6. So this is what I, what I was talking about earlier, that we have these war scroll abilities that will augment uh, the already existing commands. And I think that's just a really cool way to develop the game further. Okay, I promised that I would share my thoughts on these changes and whether I think we've seen some improvement or, you know, if we're going in the, the 40k scenario. And in general, I do think that the command system in Age of Sigmar is being improved from third edition. I think commands read more clearly now. I am excited by all this information being in one section of the book. I know that seems small, but I've been playing games with my friend Dave and we're both brand new. And so we're looking at the rule book a lot. And right now, all the commands are in different sections of the rule book. And I know I can make a cheat sheet. I can get a resource online or whatever it is. But when you're getting new players and they're not looking into these avenues yet, they just have a rule book. They want to read it to have a spot that's commands and what the commands are. That just makes sense. So this is going to be a, a really good change, I think, for especially for new players. So the process of announcing a command is very clear now and the times at which it happens are, are just super obvious. It should make the game flow a little bit more clearly or quickly now. The, the reaction commands are very simple. They can be implemented seamlessly. The other commands happening at the end of phases is a big deal because it just means that you can go quickly through your own phase. You can do all of your movement. No one's ever going to cut you off and say, I want to redeploy and then I need to do my movement. You can just kind of go through your stuff, then look at commands, then go to the next phase. And I think that all is just very clear. I think it's cool that we have these augmented abilities, the storm strike chariot augments a command as part of its war scroll and I expect that we're going to see a lot of this on a lot of different units and again this is an element of game design that keeps the flow of a match going because instead of writing a whole new ability to, that does its whole new other thing it's just you're already using power through so now you have units that take advantage of that and that that's really cool it does simplify things in that we're probably getting less war scroll abilities in my opinion but it it does it, it, I think it's a cool design space to explore ultimately. I'm very curious about things like, for example, I have my free guild steel helms. They're just these wimpy little dudes. They suck, except they're great for what they do. They're, they're low cost and, and, you know, they plug things up their screen. They have this ability that lets you share commands. If you get it on one guy, you can send it to another steel helm. I think with the strict command economy that we're seeing that that's probably going to be going away. But I would be really curious to see if we have an effect like that, because I, I think that's a really cool part of having these little steel helms is at the very least they can just band together. And, and I like that that kind of thing. Overall, I'm pleased with what I'm seeing. The new commands are great. The revamped ones look really cool. The new ones look really cool. I'm excited to give them a try. And I just hope that four command points are enough uh, because 
that's two whole rounds that you have to use those. And, you know, I guess I can always just be losing if I want to use more commands. So maybe that's just what I have to do. Okay. All right. All right. That's going to be it for this video. We'll see you all in the next one. Bye.